Support Name Explain on Patreon for $1 a month to enjoy ad-free videos, exclusive content, your name at the end of each video, as well as the chance to have your idea for a Name Explain video made into reality. Go to patreon.com forward slash name explain or click the link down below. The name Disney is now linked with animation, theme parks, and live action versions of those animations. However, this name is first and foremost a last name. And as a last name, it is undoubtedly most deeply linked with one Walter Elias Disney, aka Walt Disney. Honestly, this name has become so linked with movie production and theme parks and so on, that it's easy to forget that this is an actual last name for people. In fact, according to namecensus.com, during the 2010 USA Census, over 3,600 people in the States have Disney as their last name. So there's a chance you could be a Disney watching this video right now. And despite being linked with one of America's biggest success stories, the name Disney is actually ultimately of French origin. It is a habitual name, meaning it derives from the location of the initial bearers of this name and where they would have lived. That location being the tiny commune of isigny sur mer in the Normandy region of France. Some people from this town would have ended up with the French last name of Disigny, which means something along the lines of of Isigny. This this name would have eventually been anglicized into Disney. It most likely would have been anglicized from French in Britain and then made its way over to the USA. Though Walt's grandfather was actually an Irish immigrant in Canada, so the name clearly made its way to Ireland too. What's interesting is that the name can be found in a small English village too. That being Norton Disney, which is in the county of Lincolnshire, the namesake of this village is believed to be linked with Walt too, as his ancestors are thought to have played a prominent role in this village in the past. Walt even once visited the village and a collection of his original sketches can be found on the wall of the village hall. What this all means is that the Disney family are kind of a big deal. Even before Walt and his brother formed a studio which would go on to make hits like Snow White, Dumbo and John Carter of Mars. And while the Disney company doesn't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon, has that name stuck around as an actual last name? While we know there are 3000 plus Disneys in the USA alone, are any of them related to the man who created the House of Mouse? As mentioned, Walt's grandfather was an Irish immigrant in Canada, Keppel Elias Disney. His son of Elias Charles Charles Disney would go on to marry a woman by the name of Flora Cool on the 1st of January 1888. Together they would have five children, Herbert, Raymond, Roy, Walter and Ruth. As we can see, Walter was the second youngest of these five kids. He was born on the 5th of December 1901 in Chicago. It seems that from an early age, Walter had an interest in illustration, selling his drawings and paintings to neighbours and friends as a kid. As he grew older, he began taking more classes in drawing and photography. However, at 16, he attempted to join the army but was rejected due to being too young. However, he wanted to help, so he joined the Red Cross as an ambulance driver in France before returning to the USA in 1919. It was in this same year he got his first taste of working with cartoons. His older brother Roy got him a job at a Kansas City newspaper, where he also met famed cartoonist Ub Iwerks. Eventually, Walter and his brother Roy, as well as Iwerks, would go on to open up their own cartoon studio after some success with their laugh cartoons which was shown in a theatre in Kansas City. On the 17th of October 1923, they opened Disney Brothers Cartoon Studio. Yeah, that's pretty much 100 years ago from the date this video is going live. Yeah, it's like I planned this months in advance or something. Eventually, however, this company would change its name to Walt Disney Studios. That might seem mean towards his brother Roy and Ub Iwerks at first, but it was actually Roy who suggested the name change. Despite his name being front and center, it was far from Walt doing all the work. While he could animate and produce movies, as well as voicing Mickey Mouse originally, one of his defining skills was his showmanship. He understood how to make his cartoons appeal to the masses. He didn't even create Mickey Mouse originally. Ub Iwerks drew the character and Walt ran with it. As the years went on, the Walt Disney Company created more short cartoons, with Mickey's first appearance happening in 1928 in the short Steamboat Willie. Of course, they wouldn't stick to short cartoons, however. The Walt Disney Company's first full-length animated feature was Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, which released on the 21st of December 1937. This was a huge hit and paved the way to the Disney empire we know today. Snow White was followed by other hits like Pinocchio, Dumbo, Bambi, and Cinderella. If you're watching this, you've probably watched at least some of these films in your life. 
1955, Disney had made his empire into a physical location too, as it was this year that the first Disneyland theme park opened. It would only be 11 years after the opening of Disneyland that Walt would pass away, as on the 15th of December 1966, Walt died of lung cancer. Of course, the company that bears his name would carry on without him, getting bigger and bigger and even buying popular franchises like Marvel Comics and Star Wars. Despite only being 65 when he passed away, he left quite a legacy to say the least. Though that's only a very brief biography of Walt Disney. Walt did more than just help create a media empire in his life however. In 1925, he hired an artist by the name of Lillian Bounds. The two seemed to hit it off pretty quickly as they married pretty soon after. Together, they had two children, a biological daughter by the name Diane, born in 1933, and an adopted daughter named Sharon, born in 1936. It seems that his two daughters had a pretty good upbringing, despite their father being so well known. He would reportedly always drive them to school and never bring work home with him. The two daughters were seemingly shielded from the public spotlight for quite some time. It was only after their father's death they took on more public roles. Diane in particular played a large role in shaping her father's legacy after his death. Since the time he passed, a lot of accusations about Walt and his views have come out. Stuff we don't really need to go into here, but I'm sure you've heard about it. And much of it may be valid. I'm not here to defend the guy, I'm just here looking at the name. Diane wanted to make sure her dad's legacy didn't get bogged down by these accusations. She opened the Disney Family Museum as part of her aim to protect his legacy. She eventually married a man named Ron Miller, who would go on to become president of Disney after Walt's death. Together, they had no less than seven children. Their names were Christopher, Joanna, Tamara, Walter, Jennifer, Patrick and Ronald Jr. And seemingly all these kids are still alive today. Likewise, his other daughter of Sharon had children too. She had a daughter named Victoria with her first husband, Robert Brown, and twins named Brad and Michelle with her second husband, William Lund. Seemingly all of these grandkids are still with us, but there's a slight issue. As these grandkids come from Walt's daughters, it means they don't quite have that last name of Disney. This is due to the tradition of women taking their husband's last names when they marry and their kids having that last name. It seems these grandkids, however, didn't want to lose the name entirely. And who can blame them? It's quite a claim to have Disney as your last name. Instead, many of these last names are double-barreled. For example, the kids of Diane Disney and Ronald Miller seem to have the last name of Disney Miller in ode to their mother and father. It seems his own daughters double-barreled their last names too, with Diane becoming Diane Disney Miller and Sharon becoming Sharon Disney Lund. I, I think it's a sheer coincidence that Disney Lund sounds an awful lot like Disneyland. The Lund side of the family seem to have fallen on somewhat harder times in recent years, it would seem. From tales of these kids having addiction issues to them fighting over money left to them by their grandfather. From some accounts, Brad Lund Disney received no money well into his adulthood after being accused of being financially immature. There is of course some amount of irony in all of this. The man who created the happiest place on earth now has a family who live in somewhat financial turmoil, not very happy indeed. It seems that the Miller side of the family tree are more in the Walt Disney Company good books. Like, they even have their own page on the Disney website and everything. As mentioned, one of Diane's kids were named Walt too, and the OG Walt wrote to his sister Ruth about the fact, saying, I don't know if you've heard about the big news, the birth on Tuesday, November the 14th, of Walter Elias Disney Miller. Diane finally decided to name one of her sons for me, and I'm thrilled to have a male heir bearing my name. With the first boy, Diane pulled a name out of the blue. She didn't seem to like tagging son of hers with my name. She had a particular aversion to the Elias part of it. But when this one came, she changed her mind and gave him the full treatment. She certainly made me very happy. So it seems like Walt was a pretty big fan of his own name. And it's worth mentioning that while these grandkids are seemingly all alive, his kids are not. Sharon died in 1993 and Diane died in 2013. So, while Walt's side of the family tree have many relatives with Disney in their name, we can find full-fledged Disney still alive today through the descendants of Walt's brother, Roy. As mentioned, Roy was pretty much just as pivotal in creating the House of Mouse as Walt was, despite not having his first name in the company name. Roy had just one son, that being Roy Disney. Yeah, they have the same first name. They're often differentiated by their middle initial, with Walt's brother being known as Roy O. Disney and his son being known as Roy E. Disney. This makes Roy E. Disney Walt Disney's nephew. Roy E. actually ended up being a pretty big deal at the company, more so than any of Walt's actual children. He was a senior executive at Disney and was the last Disney to work properly at the Disney company. 
Remember when I mentioned that Diane's husband, Robert Miller, became president after Walt died? Well, it was actually Roy E. Disney who ousted Robert from the position after he felt like he was taking the company in the wrong direction. Seriously, there's some proper succession stuff going on here. Roy E. Disney was a powerhouse at the company and had the name to prove it. He too, however, died in December of 2009. Roy E. did leave four kids behind, and as he is a man and we live in a patriarchy, it means that all four of his children with his first wife of Patricia Ann Daly have the last name of Disney, with no double barrels or anything like that. Their names are Tim, Roy, Abigail, and Susan. This means that Walt is the great uncle of these kids, and it seems out of all of these kids, Abigail is the one in the spotlight the most, working as a producer on various documentaries. Her brother Tim also seems to have produced films and documentaries too, so through these kids, and even their own kids too, the Disney name lives on with connections to the original Walter and Roy Disney. As mentioned, this year marks 100 years of the Walt Disney Company being a thing, and I can't help but imagine it will still be here in another 100 years in some way, shape or form. Who knows what beloved IP they would have brought and burned into the ground by then. Though, to be fair, The Last Jedi is my favourite Star Wars film. Yeah, yeah, come at me. Name Explained depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon, so a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content, the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explained videos, and your name at the end of the video with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash Name Explained or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All of that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.